The new Audi S8 Plus is today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. I would say let's call it the authority because what happens when you put 605 horsepower into a top luxury sedan? We're going to find out. And some more basic facts about the car. 5 meters 13 in the length, 2 meters 99 in the wheelbase, so really a long wheelbase, of course, for this top luxury sedan. You also want to chauffeur some people, maybe, but I think not with this car, and we'll soon show you why, actually. And about the price, well, if you think about it, you have 150,000 bucks, in this case, the price in euros in Germany. If you have that one spare, then you could go for this one or for example of the A8L, the long version with the W12, that's almost exactly the same price. And even more expensive, a little bit more expensive, 165,000 in euro would be the Audi R8. So one of the most expensive Audi so far here, but you get kind of everything inside as well. We'll also soon show you that one. And so what's the verdict here on the exterior so far? For to me, I think very impressive, definitely. Let's get into the details of this S8 Plus version. We've got a huge single frame grille in glossy black. That's especially here for the Plus version as well. And then we got those special matrix LED headlights here as well. You see the daytime running light. And I think it's real artwork. You see the different lines inside the lights. The matrix LED is top that Audi is offering actually. Then again, carbon's fiber scheme between the air intakes and also the very lower part. So carbon fiber is the design scheme and also the material scheme here. See it also here in the lower part and we'll soon also see it in the rear and also in the interior. So that is really all about this car. Of course, it sits a little bit lower. This color, by the way, is a matte paint, really astonishing paint and it's called Follette Silver Matte then. And I think all of the contours of the car they are even more stressed by this color and see there's also this play of light and shadow always when you know another curve is forming here and that is really beautiful. Then again carbon fiber scheme and I want to hear from you guys do you think it's too much? Is it not elegant anymore or do you still think it's elegant if you have a lot of black elements around the car so I really look forward to your opinion. We got more of that actually also in the rear so that's Steadily move on. You see the main design is above the door handles here. And again, this matte finish here really plays a great effect. Then we got huge tires, 21 inch in a two color scheme, and also with carbon ceramic brakes. And they're really massive, but they have a good effect. I'll tell you later on when we drive the car. 21 inch, well, they're a little bit protected here by the tire lip. But I think, well, I would not go for 21, maybe a little bit smaller, so that adds more comfort than those might lack some comfort. We'll also take a look at that while driving. We got, by the way, also a uh, not a chrome frame here, as used to with the A8, but also in this black shiny color then. So this actually fits the car very well from the whole scheme. Then, because they had to create more drag right here, we have a spoiler also in carbon fiber it's really true carbon fiber and that what has been done because this car can also go 305 kilometers an hour usually the 8 can only go 250 kilometers an hour well to me it doesn't really matter because how fast do you want to drive actually it, it doesn't really make sense to drive that fast but then if you get in this region you need more downforce at the rear and that's what it's for and finally if you take the rear perspective huge sporting exhaust with four pipes and also surrounded all by carbon fiber again. What do you think? V8 it says on the side, not that you can speak V8, but it's V8 turbo. Four liters of displacement and a very nice engine hood design here, definitely. 605 horsepower for the first time they break this limit in the luxury segment. 85 horsepower more to be exact than the usual S8 version which well obviously has sufficient horsepower already but with this 
kind of performance tweak. There's also a new overboost function inside that temporarily you can get even more boost from the, from the turbo then. And um, this makes this figure of 3.8 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers. And especially more important is how we can, for example, accelerate from, let's say, 50 to 120. And we'll soon experience that on the German Autobahn. A great German Autobahn special will be coming here, up here on Autogefühl today. I know especially our American friends are really looking forward to that. And that is surely the, really the right engine for this kind of purpose then. And now let's get access to the authority accompanied with this cascading indicator light already when we open the car. Beneath this skin is a 231 kilogram chassis, which is actually kind of light for such a car, and that's the keyless function. Let's open, get inside, and you see the first look of the interior. This is a special plus interior as well, and the theme here is again carbon fiber also on the inside. So especially there, everything which is covering the lower dashboard area. And the other scheme is red contrast stitches. You directly get the full leather equipment and well that's really a pity because in, especially in the sporty car I would really expect some Alcantara here that's um, again one floor then here. But what is actually quite good that you get a lot of steering equipment, you pay a lot of money of course with this 150,000 bucks but then you really get everything in for example the four zone uh, air conditioning we'll also see them soon in the rear later on and um, also the GPS is included that will pop out soon as well. So. It's kind of, you already have everything in here then. Although it has the performance of a super sports car, it's at the same time a center of well-being. And for me, it starts at the inside of the doors with this beautiful cloth here, very soft as well. And then the seat form itself is really very comfortable. Of course, you do not have an upright position as you would have in an SUV, but still, as for a flat seating position, I think it's the maximum you can actually get, even as tall persons, you can really relax here. For example, also the head restraint, you can put them either fully flat or you can move them around a little bit like a pillow, so you can really maybe take a small nap or something like that, even as a driver. Important if you're a chauffeur, but um, I'm not sure if I will leave this car to my chauffeur. And um, just uh, some kids just passed by and uh, some of the kids say, oh, there's a wedding going on, you know, because the top luxury sedan. But I think this is maybe uh, the one car where you would drive yourself to your wedding. And uh, however, if you're maybe a little bit annoyed by your wedding or maybe you're afraid, then you can also use the relaxing functions, for example, the lumbar support right here. Or if you put that one here, this is a massage function. There are different options available. I can also see it on the screen. Uh, for example, Welle, that means a wave or uh, Klopfen that is also German and says where I get some, like, you know, someone is hitting me with a, with a fist in the back and, and they stretch or just back or just the shoulders at the lower part. So you can really pick which region you want to um, have. And the good thing about it, I usually don't use massage functions in the cars because they are rather poor usually. But here in this case, it goes all the way up to the shoulders and um, you really uh, <laughs> get trapped uh, kind of in this massage function because you always want to use it. It's like an orchestra when you start the car. Look at that. The screen has popped out, the instruments get illuminated, also the indicators go to the very far corner each. And also I think sound experts can help me on that one from the sound system here. I think the Oswalds one are responsible for the high tones. They pop out and I mean, it's all totally unnecessary, but it's just like this wow effect. The steering wheel, rather compact and that's also good with the red contrast stitches on the inside. And then those very clear instruments, wide letters and everything is kind of that exact and very clear really in your side. And in the middle, you got the digital screen it's not the newest Audi virtual cockpit, but I really don't need that, to be honest. I mean, you can go to the set nav here in the middle, you can get commands here. 
or for example also the radio function and um, also the speed we'll see that one later on my favorite part of the interior is this matte brushed aluminum and also with the audi clock inside and the audi rings inside they are again in such a clear way you think you Maybe seeing clearer now with your glasses or something, something like that. By the way, you can also pop in the screen again. Not possible with an all new Audi A4 anymore, but here it still is. Then this middle console is actually quite huge and you do have a lot of buttons, yes, but I think, well, they are kind of self, self explanatory. For example, the seat heating, let me turn on the ignition again. And um, you've got, for example, seat heating, seat cooling here as well. You can use both at the same time when you're maybe wet in cold winter days or it has rained or something like that. Then you can cool down or like get, get, get dry and warm at the same time. That's a good solution. Again, high quality also when turning the knobs, as we know from Audi. And so you can for separately use this and this side. Also in the rear, we'll soon show you. And then there's a central MMI knob. You can control everything of the control system above there. We can also show you that quite soon. And there's still a number pad, which you can use, for example, to dial phone numbers or hit hotkeys, for example, for your favorite radio stations or something like that. Then let's continue right here. The sh shiny, glossy black surface here, well, it does look good when it's clean and doesn't have any scratches, but I think it will get, you know, for example, fingerprints and maybe also some scratches. It's kind of over. Very cool gear selector here. You can rest your arm on that one and then also control the infotainment control unit. Well, actually a quite handy solution. Behind here, there are some beverage holders. Well, classy here to smoke, but seriously, you smoke in a 150,000 euros car and ruin it by that? Nah, don't do that. And then we got a split armrest here and there are some cables depending on the you know iPhone 5 or iPhone 4 that you can also charge that when you plug it in right here so that's suitable then as well more storage space at the inside of the doors and then look at that one a special flip up storage space also at the inner armrest. It's available for the driver and the co-driver. And well, quite a nice solution. And then there's a standard glove box. Slides down very smoothly as we expected. The DVD changer is in here, but there's also an LCD slot and also SD and SIM slots, for example, if you want to use the internet with this car. Oh yeah, and finally, I want to show you the Audi Drive Select. With this adaptive air suspension, a really superb suspension, we can also pick different modes and also for the throttle input, uh, comfort, everything is kind of calm and comfort, dynamic, more throttle input and also stiffer suspension and individual. You can also set it and then take all this, the different stuff, you know, set it on each single level, what actually can be changed. And then um, you can also go to the S mode with the with the automatic shifting lever, of course, and that this automatic converter gearbox, for example, also a little bit firmer. So a lot of possibilities here. We start the engine right here. And we can set the automatic shifting lever. I would usually do it like that, but I'm doing it that way now that you can see the illuminated top of that rear neutral then I can wow <laughs> nice <laughs> and I can also go to D and then as I was talking go back again that is the S function then I'll show you the difference later on when we drive as well so far let's go into the rear rear, rear drive not rear, rear rear drive it's not it's with overdrive. drive and the rear view is then connected with this camera we got the fake drone view from above on the left and then you can see also a normal huge rear, rear, rear camera and then when I turn the steering wheel I see where I'm actually heading to. Going on the motorway, we do the German Autobahn test ride. 
we accelerate very hard now to take on that motorway. Wow, you could do that. Let's take it to the next level. And that's 200, 210 heavy even, and it felt like nothing, it felt like nothing special, and that is actually the incredible part. The car is so silent, and the car is also so easy to handle, although we have a wheelbase of about 3 meters. Also, if I just want to relax again, meanwhile, there's absolutely no problem. For example, this 140 to 180 again, just to know how impressive the acceleration still is in the higher speed regions. Let's go. Wow, really incredible. And again, I have to stress that you don't feel, you know, stressed by this acceleration, although it is very hard because the car is so silent and then a very harmonic power output that is. I think maybe the, the, the best part with this car. By the way, I can also go to the sport mode. Then the torque is a little bit higher always and the gears are also shifted differently. That is also possible then, but I mean, usually you're just perfectly fine with the normal D mode. Then. The sound system. Bango Olufsen system here and um, I've turned on some non-royalty free music and it's actually a very clear sound, a very relaxing sound as well. You hear the different nuances of the sound and that is also again another factor while riding that you can have great sound and enjoy your favorite music of course. Even if you don't have the massage seat activated of course, the seats offer a very good support. This is by the way, this beeping was a warning cars in front of me are braking. Again, here with the adaptive cruise control we have also included here because this car can have has everything also from the system systems. Then you also get a warning just first of all in the head-up display visually and also an acoustic warning and this car can also autonomously brake. Actually a good thing of course and I think it should be included in every serial equipment no matter how much the car is costing. So that's so far for the Autobahn riding. I hope you liked our small German Autobahn report here. And of course, we also want to take a look at how the car performs in a more agile way on the countryside roads. And so, uh, well, I would say, let's jump over to that. Now we'll continue without the motorway. Starting here with the bumpy road, and there we can realize the suspension is really forgiving. So it's also no problem to on bumpy roads. However, those 20 inch alloys, mm, they're a little bit too big. So you do feel that actually, I would rather go with, let's say 19 or something like that. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God, then 100. Incredible already. Totally crazy. Yeah, I really like this harmonic acceleration. That it's not this, that actually brutal car is totally sliding around. It, well, it's really, really very harmonic, so to say that. Here in the countryside road, factors even stressed more with the sound insulation because here it's totally silent now. And we can um, very well test also how the car is steering then when we find some corners. For example, let's drive that one very fast now. Hammer the brakes. Wow, yeah, for such a heavy car, that is really superb. So it does actually feel like a smaller car as for the handling. And um, I mean, if you compare it to any other sedan in this class, I think this one is the sportiest. I said that earlier before, as we were just also driving the normal S8. So this one here is really my favorite driving luxury sedan, definitely. And now my conclusion on the new Audi S8 Plus. From the exterior, definitely very hot. I usually don't like silver colors at all, 
but this matte silver finish really very very hot and I think the car has still some elegance and it's not really too much with the black styling figures especially because we got some two color scheme and the carbon fiber is not used too much so I think they found a very good way then the interior as refined as we know from Audi and you get all the top luxury features just give me some Alcantara seats and I'm also satisfied with that the driving really superb I'm not sure if any other top luxury brand can match this one for the driving dynamics that you feel it would be like a smaller car although you have over five meters in length and in the performance well we ha don't have to discuss that you've seen the figures and also the acceleration as it went up in the tachometer that was really very impressive the question remains why would you buy such a car because most of the luxury features and performance you can already get maybe with an Audi A6 and also for less money and something like that. So why would you go for this one? There's just one real answer to this one, because you can. So I leave you with this conclusion and want to hear your feedback on the exterior, interior and the driving and about the overall sense of this car. And I hope I'll also see you at the next Autogefühl episode with Thomas. Thanks for watching and bye.